Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Thursday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and uh, spring training is, is underway, and therefore there's been a lot of uh, interviews conducted with various players and members of the management staff and the management team in the front office. And I want to talk today about some of the comments in those interviews and some of the things that uh, I've read on Mets blog over the last couple of days. And um, I want to spend some time talking about those things today. First and foremost, the uh, this is the time of year now when spring training picks up that uh, reporters kind of go nutty and really just have so much stuff to talk about. There's almost like a point where they talk about too much stuff. That's the first thing I wanted to, come, wanted to cover today, um, that uh, Joanna Cespedes has promised the Mets, according to a report, that he will not golf during the season. Uh, and this all sort of stems back to previous issues that the Mets have had, or not. I don't even know that the Mets have had them, but just like in general, previous issues with Cespedes golfing in season. Um, and to quote Sandy, it was bad optics um, to see to see Cespedes on the golf course when he wasn't playing because of his injured leg. Um, personally, I don't think it matters whether he golfs or not. You know, if if he was golfing every day during that unbelievable run that he had in 2015, where he literally strapped the team to his back and carried them to the National League Eastern Division Division crown and into the World Series, um, <laughs> let him golf, man. I don't I don't think there's a correlation. Um, but and I and Sandy Alderson has said as much publicly. Uh, but I'm sure privately that they talk about it like it would be better if he didn't golf um, during the season, especially if he's injured. Speaking of injured outfielders, um, report on Michael Conforto as of yesterday. He has started baseball activities, which is to say he's long tossing. Um, he has not yet swung a bat, but at this point in time, the prognosis remains the same. Um, he will likely be back on or around May 1st. So that's good news um, to see that there haven't been any setbacks. Knock on wood, which I don't have in the car, but knock, knock on wood. I uh, hope it stays that way. Shifting gears to uh, injured pitchers. Um, Dave Island had a uh, little, pre not a press conference, but just like an interview yesterday, I guess, um, with, with some reporters present. And uh, he talked about, spent a lot of time talking about Matt Harvey. Um, and really, even before then, he he got into saying the same sorts of stuff that Mickey Calloway said about the Mets pitching staff, which was basically like, I, I have never seen a collection of talent on one team that has this much promise. And it's, it's awesome to hear that. And it's, it's obvious that Mickey and, and Island both are doing whatever they can to sort of boost the confidence of the, the pitchers, which, you know, good, they need to, they should. Um, but particularly with regard to Matt Harvey, um, Island made a couple of comments about his about Harvey's performance last year, and he sort of said, I, I, "We noticed some um, some flaws in the, in the mechanics of his delivery from last year." And Island suggests that he that, that he Harvey um, developed those flaws to compensate for the injuries that he was dealing with. So they they're suggesting that he has uh, he has identified those uh, those flaws and will address them and hopefully correct them. And with the goal being to get Matt Harvey back to the form that he was in in 2013, which of course was his debut season, uh, his amazing debut season, uh, where he started the All-Star game and wore those bright orange shoes. Um, but it would be awesome just to have Harvey back to being the guy that he was in 2015 which you could argue he was even better than he was in 2013. So the bottom line is if the Mets are going to contend, um, this pitching staff needs to stay healthy and needs to stay uh, uh, beyond above average. And that needs to happen, and Harvey's sort of patient zero on that list. Um, speaking also about pitchers, John Ricco, uh, assistant general manager, was interviewed uh, yesterday, and he said that the Mets are still considering adding, quote, an arm or two uh, to, uh, to the team. And that sort of goes, in, goes along with what uh, everybody has been suspecting, that the Mets are going to do something to uh, add some pitching depth. Uh, the, the black marks against the two upper tier names on the list being Lance Lynn and Alex Cobb uh, are exclusively the Mets would have to give up that, that draft pick. 
um, the, you know, because both of those guys rejected the qualifying offers from the Cardinals and the and the Rays to become free agents. So the, uh, the the draft pick thing is a little bit tough, but as someone pointed out on Twitter, and I wish I could remember who it was, um, they pointed out that Matt Reynolds was a second round draft pick. Uh, so, you know, it isn't it isn't it isn't like um, it, it isn't like a second round draft pick is going to amount to anything. But you can't also say that they won't because for every Matt Reynolds, there's someone who's you know was drafted in the second round who is a superstar. I of course can't think of anyone off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's someone out there. Um, finally, uh, the, uh, the 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 very next thing I want to talk about is baseball starting as far as games are concerned. I looked at the schedule and I couldn't believe it. Next Friday, the 23rd, at 1.10 p.m., there is the first baseball game of 2018, at least as far as we're concerned as Mets fans. Um, 1.10 p.m., the Mets play the Braves. I, I can't wait. I mean, I cannot wait for baseball to start. Um, this has been, uh, this has been a, a, another sort of really interesting offseason where, uh, you know, <laughs> Nothing happened, and then stuff happened, and now I'm looking at this Mets team like like I did the same the same way I did the team last year, and that's a little bit scary because I was so optimistic prior to last season. But we'll see what happens. You know, this is a brand new year. This is a brand new coaching staff. They're all saying the right things. Um, now I'm curious to see how that's going to translate to success on the field. So, uh, what did you guys think about uh, what do you guys think about the pitching situation? That's the big question that I want to have answered. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing some feedback about that. So hit me up on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met and let me know your thoughts about who the Mets should be adding as far as a, a pitcher is concerned or more than one. Um, or you can reply in the comments below. I uh, thank you for watching the video as always. And until next time, let's go Mets.